Have you ever come across someone using a multiband compressor or dynamic EQ and realized that they seem to be doing similar things? Early on before digging too much into their designs, I sort of thought the same thing and it's along the lines of there being more than one way to skin a cat. And that's a terrible saying by the way, I mean we love the kitties. There's a specific use for one over the other and we will be going over them. When you don't know the best tool to use for the job, it can halt your progress and this was one of my most requested videos so I figured I would break it down. Another thing you guys ask is to explain Soothe, and I'm gonna do my best to explain how it's similar and different to dynamic EQ and multiband compressors all within this episode. By the end of this video, you'll have a better grip on which tool to reach for, when, and why. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST, and first and foremost, I wanna say I appreciate all of you guys watching the channel. I'm pretty sure this is the episode that's going to get us to 50,000 subs, and I wanna thank each and every one of you. No crazy transitions this time around. Just please, if you aren't subbed, help a brother out, man. We're trying to grow the channel into the year 2022. But on to the comparison. In the simplest form, remember this. All dynamic EQs can expand and reduce dynamic range. Not all multiband compressors have the ability to expand dynamic range. You know, a multiband comp works like a comp, and a dynamic EQ works like an EQ with some similarities of a comp. But let's dig a bit deeper into this. One thing to point out here is that Soothe can't expand dynamic range. So that's one similarity to a multiband compressor, right? Let's get into our main topic. Number one, when to use them. A really good place to use multiband compressors is on your two bus. It can be used as the final compressor to make sure your low mids don't muddy up the song and that your subs aren't overbearing. But on that subject, I wouldn't mind if my subs were overbearing. Hit me with as many subs as you can this episode. Make sure to tap that bell to be notified when we upload new content. And I lied. My transition game is still crazy. Another way to use multiband compression is definitely on the bass because it's great for finding a way to control and tame the low end and and the low mids. A great place to use dynamic EQ is on frequency resonances that only appear at certain times in your source material. For example, let's say someone hit a certain note while singing and every time they do, there's a resonance, but you don't wanna notch that frequency out of existence only when it's annoying. Same goes for bass. It's pretty often that frequencies will pop out when playing a certain note and you can notch it during the proper times. I don't recommend using multiband compression on a vocal, but I've seen people do it and make it work. And when all else fails and you run out of ideas, just throw Soothe on the material. It's specifically a resonance suppressor that can handle the jobs of both of these things, considering it isn't static. But more on Soothe in a bit. Topic number two, the amount of bands. When you're dealing with a multi-band compressor, we typically have three or four bands to work with. This usually occupies sub, low mids, mids, and highs, or less if you don't want to, you know, have the effect on the audio. With dynamic EQs, there's usually six bands, which gives you a bit more versatility when you're trying to pin down these frequencies. Being able to have concentrated bands is definitely a win for the dynamic EQ. But then again, you don't want to have tons of bands because you'll start dealing with all kinds of phase shifts. The fact that a multiband compressor has crossover points means that there's going to be some sort of phase alteration happening, even if we can't hear it. Now, when it comes to Soothe, that plugin has six bands or nodes, which is the same number as a dynamic EQ typically has. So we have a point for it grabbing characteristics from both of these so far. Where Soothe takes it to the next level is it has unlimited bands available to automatically detect resonances that need to be suppressed. There's truly nothing like it. Topic number three hardware versus plugin use. Now, both of these have software emulations, but as far as I know, there is no dynamic EQ hardware unit. The closest thing to a hardware dynamic EQ would probably be a de-esser, but those are designed to work on a specific frequency area, while a dynamic EQ can target any area. You with me so far? Cool. Now, a multiband compressor has hardware units with crossover frequencies. The interesting thing about these is just from them being engaged, they can affect the audio passing through it. But with dynamic EQ, it's not going to affect the audio at all unless it hits a certain threshold. This is why dynamic EQ will always be considered the transparent option of the two. I don't think there will ever be a hardware version of something like Soothe because it feels like it would just cost a lot of money. I mean, let's think about this for a second. Uh, a multiband compressor has to have multiple compressors compressors inside, right? So like three or four of them, then crossover points. And that sounds really expensive, right? Now, how do you think this would be with a six node frequency resonance suppressor with unlimited bands? Yeah, basically impossible. So let's just hop into the next topic. Number four, 
broadband versus narrow. Another thing that separates these two is that multiband comps are mainly used for broadband and dynamic EQs are meant for notches and cuts and Sooth happens to work for both. If you remember in my previous episode, Modern vs. Old School EQ Explained, I talked about how back in the day they used broad moves and this really ties in with the fact that the only option they would have had from those choices is a multiband compressor because hardware units existed and plugins did not. And since multiband compressors affect the audio signal with no compression happening because of the crossover points, people refer to this as a colored sound. When we deal with dynamic EQs, they're thought of as extremely transparent tools. These EQs are much more suited for notching. The way they differ from a static EQ is they only pull out the frequency when it becomes overbearing. That way you don't have to EQ out a frequency that might have been needed in the source material at another time. Soothe works on the material whether broadband or narrow moves are needed. So this would be a way in which it's similar to both of them. Whatever resonance there's too much of, whether it's a large buildup in the mid region or a whistling frequency that needs to be notched, Soothe can take care of it. So let's go over these topics one more time. When to use them, amount of bands, hardware versus plugin use, broadband versus narrow. It's pretty interesting to see the different use cases for these and to understand the practical times to grab one over another. They both have their place in the world and it makes sense why people confuse them for a long time. But I'm glad we were able to get a grasp on what makes them unique and the comparisons that they have to Soothe. All of these tools can easily be abused, especially Soothe. So just be careful when using them in your projects. We always wanna make the most of our source material and find a way to make it shine, not destroy it with processing way more than is necessary, and that can happen extremely easily with just the turn of a knob. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I am out of here. Mic drop, <laughs> except as engineers we know, I'd never really drop this thing, because they get really expensive, even if they're both pieces of sure. Later.